Hey there, this is Yobo, and I think it's day 272 of life according to Yobo. 270 something. Welcome back for another episode, learning how to live our life with no mess, no stress, and no BS. You can always watch my videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my life according to Yobo page on YouTube. And like my life according to Yobo page on Facebook. Welcome back in our relationship series. Your boy ain't no relationship expert, but honey, I can tell you all the stupid stuff I did. And if you learn from it, that's where the value is. Let's immediately get back into this message once I pause to Clark's sisters. All I've been doing is taking notes. I took notes of my Candace's message, and she recorded uh, Joel Osteen's message. And then on last Sunday... Apostle Rod Carpenter, who comes on TBN on Sundays, I was watching his uh, message, maybe some old tapes, because we watched about five of them. He's also in a relationship series, and I want to give you some of the statistics that he shared. But let, let's first finish wrapping up the 269 and 270 message, or 272, I don't know, the last two days, how about we say that? Listen, ladies, what I tell you? We move too fast. So this is what we're going to start doing. Start watching what people do. Don't worry about what they say. Watch what they do. I was reading this week about a woman who's a generous woman. She's a giver. She doesn't mind giving. She was on the date. It's called Why I Ended a Date. So as they were walking... And the man was talking about the goodness of the Lord and how much he loved Jesus and being so deep and so profound. They passed a beggar on the street. And she thought, okay. Hmm, he's talking so much about the love of the Lord, he didn't even notice the man on the side of the road begging. And as they went on and there was another beggar. I don't know where they were where they had all these people begging, but obviously they passed three people. He never took notice of the beggar. Just kept on talking about the goodness of the Lord. That was just a little thing she knows. Does that make him a bad person? No. Anything wrong with him? No. But when she was on a date with him, she saw that and it bothered her. She ended the date. Keep in mind, you will never find the perfect person. There are going to be some things you have to overlook if you're going to be in a relationship with anybody. Being in a relationship being in, in a relationship with a, 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 a husband or a wife, it's just like going to work every day. Everything I'm telling you applies in your day-to-day -day life. There are people with whom you work. You have to tolerate them. I worked uh, with a woman. She talked so loud. She was a constant complainer. Drove me absolutely nuts. She complained and didn't realize she was complaining. But I only had to be there in that cubicle with her. Eight hours a day. Who couldn't wait to get out of there? Away from her and all that nagging and complaining. I could tolerate that. But when you got to live with the person 24-7, I could not live with the constant complainer and with the nagger. What the Bible say, it's better to be on the corner of the rooftop than to be in the house with a cantankerous woman. Amen, somebody. So watch people. There was another young lady. She was dating a man, and one of the few dates, he got a phone call from the ex-wife. He called her all kind of B's, all kind of H's, on the phone, cussing out the ex-wife. I'm assuming they have a child together. And then when he hung up the phone, that B, that H, that blankety blank blank. And so she thought, ooh, ooh. if he's talking that way to her on the telephone, I can just imagine the way he talked to her during their relationship. I don't know. I don't think this is the one I want to be with. She ended the relationship. There was another young lady. She was dating a man. He was jealous. This man was jealous to the point that he would go in the trash can and unwrap her used panty liners. I guess he's trying to see if she had been cheating on him. I said, girl, that go way beyond jealous. That's just downright nasty. I'd have left him just because just he was nasty. 
But what did she do? She thought, well, maybe if we get married, that will make him more secure. There was another one where this fool got into it with her mama, cussed her mama out. Whatever it was that the mama did to the woman, but, you know, she's smiling. <laughs> he coming to my defense. He's not going to let anybody mess with me. But this fool is cussing out your mama. <laughs> he ain't going to let nobody mess with me. They get married. Guess who was getting cussed out after the marriage? Watch what people do. Pay attention to the signs. When that little radar go off and something inside you say, mm, I'm not too comfortable with that. There's a reason you feel that way. You got to roll with that. Oprah says doubt means don't. Don't be afraid to walk away. Don't be afraid to say, I'm calling it quits. Don't be the say, don't be afraid to say, this ain't for me. You talk to most people, most people who will be willing to talk about their divorce, ask them to name two reasons why they divorced. Then ask them if they saw any signs of it prior to the marriage. Watch that show, Who the Bleep Did I Marry? Most times it's always women who got suckered. And they will say, I saw a sign before we got married. I'm telling you, marriage ain't the prize, honey. Y'all better listen to me. You ain't got to listen to me. Just listen to me and discard it because you may need it further on down the line. Well, I appreciate y'all listening because you got a whole lot of other things you could be doing, but thank you for hanging out with Yobo. Come back tomorrow for day 270, whatever it is, okay? See you then. Bye-bye.